Jake Thompson had always been an avid bowler. Every Friday night, he and his friends would hit the local bowling alley, Starlight Lanes, for their weekly game. This particular Friday, however, was different. It was the anniversary of the old owner's mysterious disappearance, a fact that Jake's friend Tom brought up with a mischievous grin. Do you remember the story of Mr. Henderson? Tom asked, raising an eyebrow. Yeah, didn't he just vanish one night? Jake replied, lacing up his bowling shoes. That's right, Tom said. Legend has it, he was dragged into the lanes by some dark force. Tom, you always come up with the creepiest stories, said Lisa, another member of their group, rolling her eyes. Can we just play? As the game progressed, Jake couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The alley was unusually quiet, and the air felt heavier than usual. Halfway through the game, Jake noticed something strange. Lane 13, which was always empty, had a single ball positioned at the end, just sitting there. Did anyone else see that? Jake asked, pointing to the ball. Lisa and Tom turned to look. Weird, Lisa said. Maybe someone left it there. But as the night went on, Lane 13 seemed to beckon Jake. Every time he glanced over, the ball seemed to be slightly closer, inching its way toward the foul line. It was unnerving. Guys, I think we should check it out, Jake suggested, trying to keep his voice steady. You're nuts, Tom said, shaking his head. But I'll go with you. They approached lane 13 cautiously. The ball, now almost at the foul line, appeared ordinary. But as Jake reached out to pick it up, a cold gust of wind blew through the alley, sending shivers down his spine. The lights flickered, and for a moment, everything went dark. When the lights came back on, Jake and Tom were alone. The rest of their friends had vanished. Lisa! Greg! Where are you guys? Tom shouted, his voice echoing through the empty alley. A low rumble came from the direction of the lanes. Jake turned to see the pins at the end of lane 13, rearranging themselves into a strange pattern. The ball in his hand grew colder, almost burning with frost. Let's get out of here, Jake said, his voice trembling. But the doors to the alley were locked. Panic set in as they banged on the doors, yelling for help. The rumbling grew louder, and the floor began to vibrate. Tom, I don't think we're alone, Jake whispered. They turned to see a shadowy figure emerging from lane 13, a distorted silhouette of a man. His eyes glowed with an unnatural light, and his movements were jerky, like a marionette on strings. Mr. Henderson? Tom stammered, recognizing the figure from old photographs. The figure nodded slowly, raising a hand. Jake felt an invisible force grip him, pulling him toward the lanes. He struggled, but it was futile. Tom tried to grab him, but the force was too strong. Jake! Tom screamed, but his voice seemed distant, muffled. Jake was dragged to the end of lane 13, where the pins had formed a circle. The ball in his hand shattered, releasing a thick black smoke that enveloped him. He felt himself being pulled down, down into the darkness beneath the lane. When he opened his eyes, he was in a vast, empty space, the ground beneath him smooth and cold. The shadowy figure stood before him, now clearer. It was indeed Mr. Henderson, but his face was twisted in agony. Why are you doing this? Jake asked, his voice echoing in the void. I was trapped here, Mr. Henderson replied, his voice a haunting whisper. A curse binds me to this place. I need someone to take my place. Take your place? No, I won't, Jake shouted, backing away. But the darkness around him seemed alive, reaching out with tendrils of shadow. Jake felt them wrap around his legs, pulling him back toward Mr. Henderson. You have no choice, Mr. Henderson said, his eyes filled with sorrow. It's the only way I can be free. Jake's mind raced. There had to be a way out. He remembered the stories, the legends. There was always a way to break a curse. Tell me how to break the curse, Jake demanded. Mr. Henderson hesitated. The curse can only be broken by a willing sacrifice. Jake's heart sank. There has to be another way. There isn't, Mr. Henderson said, his form flickering. You must choose. Stay here or find someone to take your place. Jake felt the shadows tightening around him, their grip cold and unforgiving. He couldn't spend eternity in this void, but he could, couldn't condemn someone else to this fate. Desperation gave him strength. With a surge of willpower, he broke free from the shadow's grasp and ran. The void seemed endless, but he pushed forward, hoping to find an exit, a weakness in the curse. Behind him, Mr. Henderson's voice echoed, filled with a mixture of hope and despair. You can't escape, Jake. The curse will follow you. Jake ignored him, focusing on finding a way out. 
In the distance, he saw a faint light. He sprinted toward it, his lungs burning, his heart pounding. The light grew brighter, and he threw himself into it. He stumbled, falling onto the polished floor of Starlight Lanes. The alley was empty, silent. He was back, but he wasn't alone. The shadows still clung to him, whispering in his ears. Tom rushed over, relief flooding his face. Jake, you're back. What happened? Jake struggled to his feet, his mind racing. The curse was still with him, but he had escaped the void. He had to find a way to break it. Tom, we need to leave now, Jake said urgently. They ran out of the alley, the cool night air hitting them like a refreshing wave. Jake could still feel the curse's presence, but he was free for now. As they drove away, Jake knew he had to find a way to end the curse, not just for himself, but for Mr. Henderson and anyone else who might fall victim to it. The shadows whispered, a constant reminder of the darkness that awaited him if he failed. In the weeks that followed, Jake researched everything he could about curses and dark forces. He visited libraries, spoke to historians, and even consulted with a few occult experts. The solution, he discovered, was more complex than he had hoped. One stormy night, Jake returned to Starlight Lanes, armed with knowledge and determination. He performed the rituals he'd learned, invoking ancient words of power. The air crackled with energy as he confronted the shadows. I will not be your prisoner, Jake declared. I break this curse and set you free. The shadows writhed, the darkness thickening. For a moment, it seemed like the curse would overwhelm him. But Jake's resolve held firm. With a final, powerful incantation, the shadows dissipated, leaving the alley in peace. Jake collapsed, exhausted but victorious. The curse was broken. Mr. Henderson's spirit appeared before him, now serene and free. Thank you, Mr. Henderson said, his voice filled with gratitude. You have done what I could not. As the spirit faded, Jake knew that the alley was safe once more. He had faced the darkness and won, ensuring that no one else would suffer the same fate. Starlight Lanes returned to its former glory, and Jake's life slowly returned to normal. Though, he would never forget the night he faced the shadows of Lane 13. Story number two. The old bowling alley had been shut down for years, but tonight it was alive again. The once vibrant, neon-lit Brunswick Bowl stood dilapidated, its broken sign flickering faintly in the midnight air. Tom, Alice, and Jake stood at its entrance, excitement and trepidation swirling in their minds. This was their night to conquer the town's most infamous haunted spot. Tom, the leader of the trio, pushed open the creaking door, the echo of his bravado bouncing off the dusty lanes. Alice clutched her flashlight, her grip tight as she cast the beam around the alley. Jake, trying to mask his fear, recorded everything on his camcorder. The plan was simple, explore the alley, document any paranormal activity, and become legends among their friends. As they stepped inside, the scent of mildew and decay hit them, making Alice gag. The lanes stretched out in front of them, shadows playing tricks in the darkness. They set up base near Lane 12, notorious for its eerie tales. Legends spoke of a bowler named Eddie, a prodigy who had died tragically in a freak accident during a tournament 50 years ago. Since then, people claimed to have seen his ghost, eternally seeking a perfect game. Tom, ever the skeptic, scoffed at the stories. It's just a myth. Ghosts aren't real, he declared, setting up a makeshift bowling game with an old ball and a few fallen pins. He lined up his shot and rolled the ball down the lane. It veered left, crashing into the gutter. See, no ghost here. Jake panned the camera, capturing the decayed surroundings. What if we provoke Eddie, he suggested. Ask him to show himself? Alice shivered at the thought. Do we really need to do that? What if the stories are true? Tom grinned mischievously. Let's find out. He turned to the empty lane, his voice mocking. Hey, Eddie, if you're here, why don't you show us how it's done? The air grew still, hot, a palpable tension settling around them. Alice's flashlight flickered, the beam narrowing until it illuminated lane 12. They heard a soft rumble, and then the ball Tom had thrown earlier slowly rolled back towards them, stopping at their feet. The three stared in disbelief. No way, Jake whispered, his camcorder capturing every moment. Tom, determined to maintain his skepticism, grabbed the ball and threw it again. This time, it rolled straight down the lane, striking all the pins with a resounding crash. Alice screamed as the pins reset themselves, the machinery long broken, but now seemingly functional. Okay, that's creepy, 
Tom admitted, his bravado wavering. Let's get out of here. As they turned to leave, the doors slammed shut with a deafening bang. They were trapped. Panic set in, and Alice's breathing grew rapid. Tom and Jake tried to pry the doors open, but they wouldn't budge. Look! Alice pointed to the far end of the alley. A figure stood there, cloaked in shadows. It was a man, his eyes glowing an unnatural white, a bowling ball clutched in his spectral hands. Eddie, Jake whispered, fear paralyzing him. The ghostly figure approached, each step echoing ominously. He stopped at lane 12, staring at them with hollow eyes. Then, he bowled. The ball hurtled down the lane with impossible speed, shattering the pins and sending a chilling wind through the alley. We have to do something, Alice cried, tears streaming down her face. He's gonna kill us. Tom, thinking quickly, grabbed a ball and stepped onto lane 12. Maybe if I bowl, he'll stop, he said, though his voice quivered with fear. He took a deep breath and rolled the ball, but it veered into the gutter. Eddie's eyes flared with anger, and the temperature in the alley plummeted. Tom tried again, but the same result. Desperation filled the air. I can't do it, Tom shouted, frustration and fear blending into his voice. Alice, her eyes wide with terror, noticed something strange about the lane. The markings on the floor seemed to glow faintly, forming a pattern. Jake, shine your light here, she directed. The markings formed an intricate design, a pentagram hidden beneath the dust. It's a seal, Jake realized. This place is cursed. Eddie's trapped here because of it. Alice remembered a story she had heard about breaking curses. We need to break the seal, she said, urgency in her voice. But how? Tom, still holding the ball, had an idea. Maybe if I get a strike, it'll disrupt the curse. He lined up his shot, focusing intently. This time, he felt a strange energy guiding him. He released the ball, and it rolled perfectly, crashing into the pins with a thunderous strike. The seal glowed brightly, then shattered, the pieces dissipating into the air. Eddie's ghost paused, his expression shifting from rage to relief. He looked at the trio, his form fading. Thank you, he whispered, his voice echoing through the alley. I can finally rest. With that, Eddie vanished, and the oppressive atmosphere lifted. The doors creaked open, and the trio stumbled out into the cool night air, their hearts pounding with a mixture of fear and triumph. As they caught their breath, Jake reviewed the footage on his camcorder. We got everything, he said, awe in his voice. No one's going to believe this. Tom, still shaken, managed a weak smile. We survived. That's what matters. Alice looked back at the alley, a sense of closure washing over her. Eddie's free now. We did the right thing. They walked away, leaving the haunted alley behind. But as they disappeared into the night, a faint glow emanated from Lane 12, a reminder of the restless spirit who once haunted its lanes. And though they would never return, the legend of Brunswick Bowl would live on, forever etched in the town's eerie folklore. And somewhere in the shadows, another pair of eyes watched them leave, a new spirit awakened by their actions, waiting for its own story to be told.